over the years, we've heard a slew of different myths and claims made about plug-in vehicles. Some of them are pretty easy to bust, others require a little more work. As electric cars become more and more mainstream though, we've seen those myths and claims lessen a little. But in recent months, they've come back in full force. And while we could build an entire series of different videos about the various myths surrounding everything from plug-in cars to self-driving ones, we're going to focus on one of the mothers of all questions and concerns that a massive societal shift towards electric vehicles will cause brownouts across major cities, bring down power networks and cripple our modern lives. With the kind of fear that's usually reserved for post-apocalyptic TV shows where everyone's become a zombie or there's some major virus killing all but the naturally immune and criminally insane, this myth is one that's persisted. We still occasionally see people try and bring this one out to justify why they shouldn't or why you shouldn't make the switch away from fossil fuels. And on the scale of weird electric car myths, it's frankly right up there with a the notion that electric cars produce more pollution during their lifetime than an internal combustion engine vehicle. Which they don't, at least in the majority of the world. And yes, I could make an entire series on just that question, but I digress. The whole rationale behind this particular myth is based off the concept that right now when there's a major sports event or TV show and people get up in the commercial break to make a cuppa or turn some other electrical device on, the electrical grid is put under sudden higher strain than normal. And when there's a heat wave, the electrical demand from all of those air conditioning units forces the utility company to turn on extra electricity generation. In some extreme cases, that high demand causes the grid to simply fail to keep up with demand, which causes something somewhere to fail and a brownout to occur. As a side note, I should mention that in both of these cases, there are special employees at utilities companies whose sole job it is to predict what upcoming electrical demands will be in order to help those utility companies prepare for that demand peak. Ahead of a predicted hydro event, the utility will respond by spinning up extra power generation, usually oil, gas or coal, to help it supply the extra energy that's needed. If everyone turning on their kettle at the same time or cranking the AC can cause problems of the grid, people argue that electric cars will surely cause the same kind of problems, right? wrong. You see, unlike a commercial break in a big TV show or sports event where the break happens at the same time for everyone and everyone plugs in and turns on simultaneously, not everyone plugs their cars in at the same time every evening to charge because they don't all arrive home at the same time. Different people work different shifts and so their cars will start and stop charging at different times. Uh, many people also use charge timers too, which delay charging until the night time when electricity demand is far lower. It's generally better for the cars to use delayed charging too, as it avoids them sitting for hours with fully charged batteries. It's actually better to have the car sit partially charged before then charging it to full just before you need to use the car. Okay, so what about these air conditioning brownouts? Surely electric cars use more energy. Right? Nope. This is another misconception. Unlike AC, which will run for as long as it's hot, consuming upwards of between 3 and 5 kilowatts per hour for anything up to 9 hours a day, electric cars will typically only spend an hour or two every night charging if you plug them in when you get home. This does, of course, assume that you have an average commute, because that small daily round trip to and from work probably only uses 5 or 6 kilowatt hours of power in your car's battery pack. In short, the time that these cars spend pulling electricity from the grid is far smaller than when you're trying to cool your entire house with your mini split. Only if you're coming back from a really long road trip or you charge once a week will your car likely spend more than a few hours charging in the evening. And again, charge timers do come into play for many owners because utilities often offer time of use incentives that make electricity super cheap to use at night time. So it's a no brainer to charge at night. So far then, we've covered the fact that electric cars don't use a whole lot of electricity per day if used for just a daily commute. 
and a few errands perhaps. We've covered that many people use their charge timers to let their car charge overnight. There's a video on that, by the way, here. And we've acknowledged that not everyone is going to arrive home and plug into the mains at the same time. The final thing? Well, rather than cause a brownout, electric cars could actually help prevent them and shift your grid towards more renewable energy. A study just published by the UK National Grid predicts that by 2050, millions of electric cars in the UK will be plugged into smart charging stations that will actively and smartly manage vehicle charging and electrical grid balancing. And that means a lower, not a higher chance of brownouts because the grid will have essentially a giant network of vehicles with battery packs ready to store or provide energy when required. In fact, Assuming people use vehicle to grid, the electricity network said that by 2050, the UK's solar panel generating capacity, which will have quadrupled over today's figures, and the plug-in car fleet, about 35 million cars by then, will make it possible to store one-fifth of all generated photovoltaic solar power in electric car battery packs. These mobile battery packs, the majority of energy stored within, won't be used for daily driving, because of the aforementioned difference between vehicle range and actual commute, will make it easier for the national grid to manage peaks and troughs in energy demand without relying on fossil fuels. If you consider that the UK's national grid has already just broken its coal-free record for the year, and that was in the first six months of this, it's pretty easy to envisage the National Grid's prediction coming true. Tie in the fact that many people who own electric cars use solar panels on their home and maybe even have power walls or similar battery backup systems of their own, and you get to see that grid demand is kept pretty low. Oh, and if you're worried about the damage to your car's battery pack from using a vehicle-to-grid system, you should rest easy. As we explain in this video, V2G projects really don't use a lot of your car's battery capacity, and they can actually improve battery cell health overall. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, please do consider, if you can, sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon, buy us a coffee using Ko-fi, or visit our merch store. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving!